below, the transcendentalist philosopher king floats above them like ash in their hot air. But who was George Washington? Was he really the first transcendentalist philosopher king in St. Anselm's City of God in Roger Bacon's New Atlantis? What is the significance to modern history of his indirect relationship to Adam Weishaupt? What secrets of U.S. national history remain buried alike the bones of this man, and how many others have been, like him, so pivotal to the providence of history showing any light at all upon the topic of U.S. democracy? Because if George Washington had been a bad man, and turned out to have surplus skeletons in his closet, then democracy could have easily been done away with as soon as he died. However, it is a credit to his honor that it has survived, even at the meager two hundred and a few years as it has since it passed from Washington's hands to ours, that is, to we the people of the United States of America. If one blemish remains to blot the soul's window of this one man, then the whole occupation of democracy and the pursuit of a more free and less restraining form of self-government could well have been written off entirely. So we must be very careful in how we choose to judge this man's soul as we seek to weigh it against evil incarnate in the form of his proverbial opponent's twin eyes upon the very point of the all-seeing eye in the triangle atop the pyramid with no capstone on the back of the one dollar bill. The back of the one dollar bill is thus virtually graffiti coated in evil and satanic symbolism. Does this make the opposite side's implication meaning that George Washington, the first U.S. president, was good, equally valid? Perhaps those lucky enough to have voted and elected Washington their first president simply saw him then exactly as we see our own now 44 on down the line, that is, as the lesser of two evils, where the other is comprised of the political and religious leviathan symbolic of Satan. So can we use our knowledge of history to establish from a cursory examination of the intentions of the founding fathers of American democracy, whether the USA has it, it in its spirit to ever become a total dictatorship, beneath an utter power-mad tyrant? Can there be such a thing as a Caesar over the form of our own modern politics? Past Politics 101A A History in Symbols The popularity of Julius Caesar prevented the senators who later killed him from being able to resist first proclaiming him imperator for life. The popularity of Caesar's reforms to debt laws had made most Roman citizens very wealthy, and those who had carried Caesar's face on lead-lined coins when he came to power were carrying around gold coins when he was murdered by a conspiracy of jealous old-money senators. Brutus, the one to deliver the death blow, was himself an optimata opposed to the first triumvirate of Julius Caesar, Pompey, and Crassus. But the concept of the triumvirate did not die with Octavius, Julius Caesar's adopted nephew, following his dissolution of the second triumvirate consisting of himself, Mark Antony, and Lepidus. Because those who supported the assassination of Caesar saw the time between the end of his first triumvirate and the beginning of the second triumvirate formed by Caesar Octavian as pierced through the midpoint by their successful conspiracy to murder him. Those who supported and continued to support the assassination of anyone who would become ruler of the whole world saw their deed as an omen of future events yet to come. By the time of the murder of Jesus, called the Christ, by the Jerusalem Sanhedrin, by the permission of Roman procurator Pontius Pilate, which followed the turn of the millennium and the eon by nearly the same duration afterwards 
as did nominal years 1, occur following the event of Caesar's assassination. Those who conspired to kill any potential kings of the world who could attempt to arise had already adopted the triumvirate model as their own and formed a group dedicated to ruling the world. To make the political figure of Jesus into an example to any and all future would-be teachers of self-sovereignty who refused to bow before the Caesar over all the world, the group of conspirators who had plotted out the political impact of Julius Caesar's murder and who had seen the religious implications of the murder of Jesus Christ fulfilled, this group has systematically twisted and perverted the words of the historical person of Jesus by marginalizing his message beside the story of his murder as the basic premise for the faith of Christianity. Thus, the original symbol of the earliest followers of Jesus after the crucifixion, the ichthos, or Greek symbol of Pisces, the geometrically vesica-shaped fish logo, had to be supplanted with and replaced by a symbol determined by his killers themselves. However, they knew that, because they could not symbolize the message of their own faith to early Christians with the gruesome abuse and grisly slaughter of their ritual sacrifice of the Lamb of Peace by the traditional emblem of the crucifix itself, bedecked by the bloodied body of their Savior, it thus fell to the Roman Emperor Constantine, in his role as high priest of the Roman Flamines, colleges built around temples to the seven Olympic gods of Rome, to choose a symbol for the new religion that was seeking his approval to be accepted as a new school of Roman religion, the Christian Church in Rome. This branch of early Christianity, founded by Peter, one of the twelve apostles of Christ, and called Catholic, or Universal Christianity, appealed to Emperor Constantine by offering him, and all subsequent Caesars of Rome, the title of Pope, meaning Father, in the Roman Catholic Christian Church. His suggestion was the Chi Rho, formed as a logogram by combining two Greek letters, Chi as K, and Rho as R, which he had supposedly seen in a vision on the battlefield. Its meaning, he proposed, was, In this sign you shall conquer, pronounced in Latin as, In hoc signo vinces. Constantine's vision never became the official symbol of the Christian religion. However, by subsequent pressure exerted on the churches centered in other regions, eventually the Catholic denomination came to dominate the doctrines and dogma of the entire faith of Christendom. As such, Caesar, called only Pope, following the final sacking of Rome by the Goths and Arabs from 410 to 846 AD, continued to reign as the Emperor of Christendom, the religious kingdom of all Christians, even after the dissolution of the official Roman Empire. By supplanting the pantheist religions of Rome with monotheist Christianity, the conspiracy of king-killers effectively replaced the symbol of Jesus with the symbol of the cross as the dominant symbol of Christianity. The cross symbol signifies death, as opposed to the fish emblem signifying life, and as such is a motif used by the inheritors of the conspiracy to kill Caesar ever since to signify their own empowerment over the minds of all Christians. However, the lessons taught by the words of Jesus himself remain incomprehensible to the mindsets of those who, to this day, control the world's largest single monotheist religious empire. The Pope, today, is merely a figurehead serving the whims and dictates of a group that lurks behind the cloth, in the shadow of death in the dark night of the soul, beneath the foot of the cross. The triumvirate assassins had replaced the office of Caesar with officers loyal only to them, and the title of Caesar had been replaced by the title of Pope, 
by the beginning of the Dark Ages, when the Pope ruled from Rome over the kings and their vassals in Europe, and where the kings taxed and the vassals owned the serfs, who were the European peoples originally conquered by Caesar and converted to citizens of Rome. The symbol used by the earliest Christians to signify their loyalty to the message of Jesus was replaced by the symbol of the cross, used to signify the state authority that had crucified Jesus over the rights of his followers, the early Christians. Likewise, the logogram of Constantine, the Cairo or Constantine cross, was replaced by the cross autograph of Charlemagne, the first ruler of the Holy Roman Empire, considered the king of Europe answerable as second only to the Pope of Roman Christendom. By the lifetime of Charles the Bald, the grandson of Charlemagne, the cross had become completely dominant as the symbol of power in all Christendom. Here we see the shield of Charles the Bald, showing a red cross on a white field, symbolizing the blood of the innocent, with a golden crown at the crux, signifying Christ as the king over all Christians. Despite the Roman Catholic Pope having gained the loyalty of the Holy Roman Emperors of Europe, Christendom had been divided into the Western Roman Catholic Empire and the Orthodox Church of Greece, which ruled Eastern Christendom from Constantinople. When Constantinople was threatened by Ottoman Turks in the late 11th century, the Pope launched the Crusades, sending countless noblemen and serfs to die in a vain attempt to crush the Muslim Arab natives of the Holy Land and replace their population with Christian Europeans. The noblemen and serfs sent into the Holy Lands on the First Crusade retook Jerusalem and established themselves as the order of knights called the Hospitallers. The Hospitaller knights' patrons were doctors. However, by the time of the plagues in Europe, the church stopped being the primary care provider of medicine to the people of Europe, and the military order of knights had split into two trends, one the military order itself, and the other the practice of medicine. The symbol for doctors of medicine nowadays is commonly familiar as the caduceus, or snake wrapped around a staff, symbolizing Asclepius, son of Hermes, and founder of modern medicine according to legends of the Greek Golden Age. The caduceus staff of Asclepius is shown in modern symbols of medicine as upon a blue Constantine cross. The presence of the Constantine cross symbol at the period in time when the Hospitaller Knights were becoming the association of independent doctors practicing medicine across Europe alarmed the conspirators whose figurehead was the Roman Catholic Pope. However, what alarmed them more than the presence of the Constantine cross and the symbol of the unaffiliated practice of medicine was the presence of the cow disease. This was a symbol new to their control system because it came from somewhere outside of it. It symbolized the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the form of the crucified serpent, the creature who sheds its skin to die and be reborn again. The triumvirate of conspirators in power behind the scenes of the Catholic Church and European politics of the early Dark Ages were deeply concerned by the Hospitaller Knights concepts being brought back from the Muslim, Hebrew, and Gnostic Holy Land 